What is up, everybody? Welcome to Dead Ball TV. We got another Premier League recap for you guys this week, calling in from Tulum, Mexico. Hopefully, a Pantera doesn't jump out of nowhere and eat me live on the podcast. That would be disappointing. Uh, let us know y'all's biggest takeaway in the comments. I feel like we got to start with the biggest, hottest, boiling topic this week, which I'm kind of upset about because it's VAR. And it is the VAR incident in Newcastle's 1-0 win against Arsenal at St. James's Park. There are so many ways we can skin this cat. Um, metaphorically, of course. We love animals. How do you want to break this down? First off, did you think that the goal should have been called back? And those listening, let us know in the comments, too. Do you think the goal should have stood? No, I don't think so. I mean, it mm. it's hard it's hard to tell what... Okay. Uh, what what I see, and I like seeing the lads play. You know, I think that that makes the game more entertaining. And VAR is, uh, I, I mean, simply, it's just taken away from that. You know, it's making every small little infraction that used to be a play on, you know, or the ref wouldn't even, like, see it into, like, mm -hmm. everything's got to be hyper-analyzed. You know, because uh, it's just, it's kind of ruining the spirit of the game, you know, and I, not to make it, well, let's just stick with the game analysis and then we can go into the VAR. Yeah, I'll, t I'll make my game analysis super short. <clears throat> I think the goal should stand. I think it was the right call. The out of bounds, it's not clear that the ball is out of bounds. Honestly, dude, it reminded me exactly of Japan's goal against Spain. Yeah, where it's like a weird movie. angle where, you know, the, the yeah. viewing angle of the camera is obviously going to be a lot different when you're actually looking at right. it like bird's eye view. Right, down. right. Um, and let's be honest, if that, if that is your, like, stake to, oh, we, we didn't deserve to lose because of, like, we're talking, like, millimeters there, I think that's embarrassing. I think that's embarrassing. For that, for you to scapegoat that reason that millimeter as the reason for why your team lost. Yeah. Maybe you I, just got outplayed. If you're Arteta and you're an Arsenal fan, just admit that you guys got that you guys got beat. Simple you guys got that. beat. Yeah. That yeah. that's it. You know, you're not gonna win every single game. There's Bro, gonna, you lost 1 0 away at St. James Park. There's nothing shameful. Yeah, about against that. A, a great Newcastle side, you know? Yes. And and I don't know if it's because, you know, Arsenal fans are just the biggest trolls on Twitter and the biggest trolls on social media where they just expect, you know, that they're going to have another invincible season every single time that they start the Prem. It's like, I don't, I don't know. Like, the only thing for me that was kind of iffy is the push, the Joe Linton push on Gabriel Magalhaes. But I just want to say something. Um, Gabriel is a big man. That is a big man. And if you watch the replay, which I did about 12 times because the review took forever, yeah. he embellishes the push, which I actually think hurt his case. I think if you see like the hands and then you see him like, do you know, like, like he's throwing it back at the club. He does this like, you know, arch move thing, which is just not a natural motion at all. You're obviously trying to draw the, the push. You got mm -hmm. dunked on, mate. That's what it was. Hit the gym. I don't know what to tell you. Like, is there contact? Yes. If that was a World Cup, 119th minute, and, you're, and your team scores a goal like that, does it deserve to be chalked off because there was some contact in the guy's back? I mean, it's a, these are full-grown men. I don't, like, I don't know. Like, I, I think it might be a little harsh, sure. But to your point, to my point, just play on, man. Play on. Y'all yep. are, are six foot three. No more crying. God knows how no more swole crying. you guys are. Just play, man. It's crazy. So I thought Arteta's response was very Jurgen Klopp-esque, just like complaining after the game like Klopp always does, which I really dislike. I think that's just as bad as the VAR itself. These managers are coming out. First thing they say every single press conference is, well, I don't agree with the ref's decision. It's like, stop. You lost. You got outcoached. Hold the L. It's because and, it's easier. Walk away. It's easier for these guys to blame someone else than it is to, unfortunately, yes. put any negativity on your team. Because as we've seen, 
if your team starts being like, why the hell is the manager, you know, calling me out in the press conference, you know, that's going to hurt my mm-hmm. social media following yeah. account. I'm going to have to issue some massive apology. Like I'm going to start yeah. stinking it up. So the man gets fired and, and my club will bring in someone new who will let me do what I want, you know? And so right. I think it's kind of like a weird PR game these days, you know, like I bet back in the nineties or the eighties till those managers probably were like, yeah, he played like fucking shite, you know? Yeah. And then the player was like, okay, well said. I did. You know, there's no there's no accountability. There there's no accountability in the modern game, I feel like. No. No. Like if you're Gabriel Magalesh, bro, it's your fault. It's your fault. If he's yeah. pushing you, knock his hand off and jump. It's not that hard. Right. Now you're trying to box him out like it's an NBA rebound, bro. What are you doing? I would say if that was Tomiyasu, he would have held his ground. I mean, it's just soft, man. It's so soft. And I I had Gabriel Magalhaes my team of the season last year before y'all started saying, oh, you just hate Arsenal. Shut up. I do, but I respect a lot of their players. I mean, Gabriel's got to do better there. But you're right. A manager would never come out and be like, yeah, I don't know why Gabriel didn't do better there. The only manager I, I could see doing that is, is Mourinho. <laughs> And and that's why yeah. he's that's why he's special. That's why he's a special one. But that's also why like people hate him. They're like, oh, the, the players don't want to play for him. It's like, bro, it's because y'all are soft. S O F T. Say it with me. Soft. You just wanna, you just wanna have your hand held. It's embarrassing. That's what's embarrassing, Mikel Arteta. Not the decision. How the entire like player manager relationship now is just soft. Anyways. I saw a lot of people after the whole Tottenham Liverpool thing saying we need to get rid of VAR. I personally think that's asinine. I think it's ridiculous. Like, I don't understand what the rationale is other than the games will be faster and more emotionally thrilling. I will concede that, but they will be so incorrect. Yeah. That it's not going to fix anything if you get rid of VAR. If you guys are enjoying this content, make sure you leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. That tells us to make more of these types of videos. We appreciate your support. Now back to it. Do you think VAR should stick around? Let's just start there. I think it needs to. These games are becoming more and more important and every result matters. But there's a fine line between like what I was talking about earlier where you're hyper analyzing every single like contact and every single you know mm-hmm. event that happens on the pitch. There needs to be I feel VAR is really effective when it comes to offsides and like goal line technology and like out of yes. bounds type stuff. Like for sure, a hundred percent that needs to stay. Does it need yeah. to maybe, you know, get defined a little better? Sure. You know, it's kind of weird watching from the fan perspective and kind of this invisible plane. And, you know, there's yeah. always going to be kind of weird calls like that regardless. Yeah. But I think stuff when it comes to contact like player to player contact that needs to be on the ref. And if the ref doesn't say anything like play on. Yeah. Like it shouldn't be a VAR. Exactly. Like it's not like we're in the NFL or like college football and you know, we're like reviewing like a targeting play or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like yeah. that shouldn't exist in soccer or football. This is what I don't get. All right. VAR obviously works. It obviously works, but it just needs to be improved. Like this is how I know some of y'all mofos cannot cook. Y'all can't cook. Y'all order DoorDash every single time, right? Because everybody knows if you got any sauce whatsoever in the kitchen, the first time you make something, probably the worst time, probably the worst is going to be, right? You're like, damn, I added too much salt. I, I ruined it. You make it again. You add a little more basil at the end, whatever it is. Okay. It's a little better now, but I still should do this. Next time you got to bake it an extra five minutes. Get a little crispier on the top. You keep going until you've created the greatest dish of all time. VAR is the same thing. You don't just try it and be like, well, uh, they they uh, they overturned this uh, foul and it took too long, so scrap the whole system. No. Just do something to make the system more fluid instead of scrapping it and going back to, like, you know, World Cup goals getting disallowed that were scored but not called because the ref didn't see it. That would cause a riot in today's world, just like it did back then. Y'all don't want that again? Do you? Just for more excitement? No, I don't think so. 
It just needs to be faster. It needs to be improved. But going back to the actual result, I think it's really good for Newcastle, obviously. Arsenal, I mean, you lost one nothing away to probably one of the toughest away grounds in the country. There's nothing at all to be ashamed of about that. I just want to say a fun fact. The last time that Newcastle and Arsenal played each other in a game and both teams scored was back in 2018. It was 12 matches ago. So whoever wins these games always keeps a clean sheet, which I thought was interesting. Going back to 2018, it's kind of crazy. That is interesting. Uh, we should talk about – okay, so I'll, I'll just mention Everton tied Brighton 1-1. I think Brighton had 99% possession. It was actually insane um, at Goodison Park. We've talked about Brighton a lot on this channel. I just want to bring up the fact uh, – or, or, or kind of bring up a talking point that I created in my head yesterday. And I think Brighton right now are kind of playing the most dangerous brand of football in the Premier League because they're playing possession-based, high-octane football – with no goals, which leaves them permanently susceptible to counterattacking mm -hmm. at all times. That's and all that, Everton did. And that's what I feel a majority of the Prem teams are set up as, as counterattacking teams. Yes, because they can't play possession. Yeah, especially Everton. <laughs> especially Everton. And, uh, dude, Brighton are really, they're really struggling right now. I think it's a great result for Everton. Did you have them getting relegated? Everton? Or Wolves. You had one of those two going down, I think. I think I had Wolves. Okay. Shit. Not unless Wanky Chan gets hurt. That's like the only way that that's going to happen right now. Speaking of relegation, next game we can talk about very quickly. Crystal Palace beat Burnley 2 nothing, And I just want to say, man, Burnley are so cooked. Like, they're so done. If Crystal Palace without Eze and Elise are putting two past you, you're in trouble. I Do think you it's think it's it. time that they uh, consider getting rid of company? I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no because, one, I think he was so good in the championship. And if that's where you're headed again, don't you want to keep the manager who like set the record for points? Yeah. Wouldn't you want to stick with that guy? I mean, I just feel like they need to play a more defensive brand of football. And uh, it's going to be ugly. It's not going to be exciting. The fans are going to hate it, but it might keep them up. Like, they just don't have the players to play how company wants to play. But, I mean, who 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 comes in and saves Burnley? Lopetegui? <laughs> I mean, I have no freaking idea. They're going to bring in Nuno Espirito Santo? I don't think Burnley can afford to uh you know take a gamble that'll for sure guarantee them relegation you know they're already looking like they're shooing as a relegation yeah. team but you know they could they could maybe eke out a somehow a magical 16 or magical 7 no, i agree but they're two I mean, points off i think you stick with them man yeah yeah you know and I think you're right that, uh, you know, Burnley historically has been a very defensive minded team and a very uh, boring team. And company's got them playing a different way, the way that he wants them. Mm -hmm. It's just going to take some time. And maybe, maybe the time does, you know, the time is not just this season alone. It's going to take some time, meaning like three seasons of going to the Prem, back down to the championship. Mm -hmm. Back up to the prim again, and then that second yeah. time, you you know maybe they're ready to stay up for a little bit. Yeah, yeah, better recruitment. I mean, they lost their top goal scorer last year. We had like seventeen in the championship. I mean, I don't know who does better, and it's still so close. And company seems like a very good man manager. I would just keep him to try to keep morale high. That's what I would do. Um. Let's also talk about Brentford, who beat West Ham 3-2, and this game was like the banger of the weekend. I thought this game was going to suck, so I ended up watching the full Everton-Brighton instead, and that was one of the few terrible mistakes I made in Mexico this past weekend. Uh, Kudus scores an absolute golasso. I would say it'd be goal of the month if... Uh, oh, wait, actually, it could be the goal of the month because we're November now, huh? I was going to say Quanky Chance might be better, but that was in October, so... Never mind. I guess Kudu's got goal of the month so far. Bowen gets another. He's got seven goals in 11 games. The funniest part about this game is when we did the first 
our like first or second prem recap, which ironically I was in Guadalajara, Mexico for that one. I just keep coming back to Mexico, back to the motherland. Um, Mikel Antonio was one of the players that we were like, yo, he, he balling out. Like he shook off the Jamaican voodoo. He's got two goals, one assist, like man's mm-hmm. going beast mode. Well, he has zero goal involvement since. <laughs> and when the game was 2-1 West Ham, Ben Rama has a tap in far post. It should have been a bow and assist. And Mikel Antonio steals the tap in and clears it like out of bounds. Did you see that? Mm-hmm. Dude, it would have put the game. West Ham would have been up 3-1. They could have really just parked the bus. I don't think Brentford come back. But Mikel Antonio steals the tap in from Ben Rama, who's furious. And then West Ham scores an own goal like yep. 10 minutes later. And then Embuemo finally gets, I think, uh, the third assist to Nathaniel Collins, who's been a very good player this season. It was just a calamity for West Ham. Like, it, they, they had it in the bag, dude. And they just they ripped the they ripped the sack open. That didn't sound very good, did it? They ripped no. open the knapsack. Is that is that any better? It's probably kind of. No, it's probably not any better. It's a little better, dude. They would have been on. Let me say they would have been ninth instead. They're in eleventh right now. Three losses in a row in the prem. Maybe that David Moyes magic is wearing off. Although they did just beat Arsenal in the cup, so I guess that's a cool thing, dude. Brentford, bro, and Buemo continues to be a stud. Is he in your team of the season? If we did it right now. I think he would have to be, you know, he would have to be. It, there's a lot of these Brentford guys that I said a couple weeks ago, Brentford and Brighton are the best run clubs in the prem. I'm going to say it's, it's, it's Brentford now. <laughs> it's just Brentford. Nah, it's too early. Why? Because Brighton losing games? Because their whole goddamn team is injured? They're frauds. That's what I'm trying to say. No, I don't think Brentford had the turnover. I mean, they lost Ivan Tony, but I mean, Thomas Frank is a dog too. Like that man is a good manager. He's a really good manager. Mm-hmm. And what, what, what are Brentford right now, bro? They know Ivan Tony and Liz Brentford are ninth. They right under you. They're about to give you all that work. Oh my God, bro. You know, this y'all got top, so lucky, the, bro. The top nine of the prem is scary. Minus United, of course. But, uh, yeah, nobody ain't nobody scared of y'all, like at all. Let's let's end it with this because I'm glad you said that. Let's end it with this last topic of the day. Y'all, let us know your thoughts on this in the comments. Does the Premier League really have that many elite teams? I would say I would say yes. Compared to other leagues, yes. How many? Eight. Okay, I was thinking seven or eight. Because I think some of these teams, like Crystal Palace, very, very good team. But we've seen that, you know, if they lose two players, they go from, okay, this team might cook in La Liga to they're getting turned into paella in La Liga. There's a lot of fringe teams that are good, but not elite. Yeah, exactly. They're not elite. Like they can they can do a shift and put that work in, but they're not like terrifying. Like when Brentford's coming, when you're going to Brentford, right? Let's say you're going to Brentford Stadium. You know it's gonna be a tough game, but it, you're not like you can win. You can you can really sneak a win there. Amex Arena at Brighton, same thing. It's not a fortress. Yeah. Like you're gonna have to play well. You can't show up and not try. You can't really do that in any league. I was just thinking that the other day. I'm like, Brighton, you know, really, really good. But are they elite? I, I Zero wins in the last five? I don't, I don't think you can say that. I don't know. That's, that's, just, that's just what I was thinking. I don't know how evenly distributed the wealth is even inside the Prem. There are some teams that are, you know, it, if you make the elite echelon, you could easily rank that from there. Because it's rank not that. It, in in terms of distributing the wealth between those elite mm, teams. Okay. There's okay. like uber elite, you know, like world class, you know, if you were going to make yeah, another, yeah. another uh, category. Okay. There's probably That's only probably what? two or three teams that fit that bill, I feel like. Yeah. City, Liverpool. I'm not comfortable putting Tottenham there. I'm I was going to say kind of Arsenal. They would be kind a, of Arsenal. Yeah. 
kind of above still, us. Yeah. Yeah. They would be the third. Yeah. Yeah. I pu- I probably put us fourth or fifth. I still think our depth is a big problem. But we'll see, man. We play Chelsea tomorrow. I think it's going to be Pochettino's return. There's been a lot made about that. I got no ill will for that man. I mean, it's a huge reason that I I love Spurs like I do. So that'll be interesting. Uh, you know, follow me on Twitter if you want to see my thoughts about the game. But we're obviously not going to cover it in today's video. But we are going to end the Premier League recap there, guys. We hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video and give the podcast a five-star rating if you're listening to the audio-only version on streaming platforms. You can find my social media, Deadball TV social media, and Jake's in the description of this video if you guys want to go give us a follow to see our personal footy takes on a daily basis, whenever you want, on demand. Let us know in the comments your biggest takeaway from the Premier League this week. We appreciate you guys for watching or listening, and we'll see y'all in the next one.